What does it mean when you're working as a novelist? So you're thinking about a novel or a writer, Virginia Woolf, Walt Whitman in Specimen Days. Uh, I think the temptation is when you're doing this kind of thing where you want to sort of invoke or allude to or uh, pay homage to a work that you love or a writer that you love, um, you know, the temptation is to sort of allude, right, to, to show that you know the work in some way, you know, because you love it and it's kind of coming out of your pores. But I think in the hours, uh, what you do is something sort of more profound, which is to sort of do what Virginia Woolf wanted to do, which is to write a novel about women that makes women's lives meaningful in terms of their own, rather than just recreating men's way of thinking about women. So I just, I guess I wanted to just, and this is just something I've always wanted to ask, you know, how did you, how did it come to you? At what point did you know how you were going to do it? I guess that's the question. Sure, sure. Uh, just very quickly, The Hours is three interwoven stories, one of which is a kind of contemporary version of Wolf's great character, Clarissa Dalloway. The other is the day, the sort of imagined day in the life of Virginia Woolf when she started writing Mrs. Dalloway. And the third is a homemaker in the 50s who is reading Mrs. Dalloway. Um, <clears throat> I started out to, write, to simply write a contemporary version. It was, it was actually going to be a gay. It was going to be a gay Mrs. Dalloway. No. It didn't seem like a bad idea at the time. I know. I know. I know. Well, you know, I was living. I'm going to try to keep this on short side. I was living in Chelsea, and you know, Mrs. Dalloway takes place in 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 London society in the 20s, where Mrs. Dalloway is giving a, is giving a. a a party, and there's who's who to invite. There's a whole sense of of who matters more, who matters less. And I thought, I know that world. I live in that world. Hmm. <laughs> it stretches between 14th Street and 23rd Street. <laughs> its inhabitants are men, but it's exactly that. Hmm. It's about youth and beauty and money. And I thought, I'm going to set Mrs. Dalloway hmm. in gay New York right now. And you know, it didn't take me that long to realize, well, that's a stupid idea. But why? Well, it just, it felt like a, con no, it, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm being over, uh, it felt like a conceit. Uh -huh. And not like a book, you want to write a book that feels somehow necessary, a, a, a book you think is missing in the world. And it, it, I just felt like that's a, that's a stunt. Um, uh, and so I... Um, and we already have the boys in the band. That's and we already band. have the boys in the band. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. If we, if, if, we, if, if, we, if we needed the dose of, of homosexual self-loathing, um, there's always that to go. There's always that that to go to. Um, oh God, I forget I said that. Um, edit that out. Um, so when did you decide it well, wasn't going to be? It that? wasn't. It wasn't working as as hmm. just sort of rethinking of Mrs. Dalloway. There's already. A Mrs. Dalloway, we don't really need my take on it. I thought about, I, I tried to bring Virginia Woolf into it, um, and it still wasn't working. It still felt like an idea for a book rather than an actual book that, that, had, that had some place in the world, that had some kind of, of urgent life of mm -hmm. its own. And I was about to just give it up. Thought, well, you know. Some ideas just don't pan out, mm -hmm. and this is not over. This is not taking on the kind of of, of life a book needs to have. And um, I, would, but I, you know, the years work. You don't just throw it out overnight. And I was sitting there in my studio thinking about Virginia Woolf and Mrs. Dalloway, and um, I suddenly had this image of my mother. And I thought, you know, Mom, what are you doing in my hallucination? Mm -hmm. um, and as I thought about it, I thought about how my mother um, was a homemaker and a wife, mm -hmm. and 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 it was a it was a life that was too small for her. I don't know. I don't think it's a life that's categorically too small for anybody, but it wasn't it wasn't right for her. 
uh, but she couldn't break out of it, and so she became, she was obsessive um, about everything. Uh, those cocktail napkins she'd spent all day buying turned out to be wrong, and she had to take them back the next day, and she really would bake a cake and throw it out and start another cake. And um, I always thought of her as a sort of Amazon queen, captured and made to live in an enclosure in which, in which she couldn't move. And um, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, okay, take Virginia Woolf and take my mother, remove the end product. One, one of them, one of them is, is working on what will prove to be a great work of literature. Mm -hmm. The other is trying to bake a cake so perfect that it banishes sorrow. <laughs> the book technically matters more than the cake. Though, though a cake matters. Yeah. Um, I mean, no disrespect to cakes. Um, <laughs> but I thought if you take that away and just look at these two women's individual desires to transcend what they can do, to do more than, 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 than they're technically capable of doing. My mother gets to be in the book just as surely as Virginia Woolf does. Mm -hmm. And there she was. And then suddenly it, it, was three, it was these three parts and it felt like it could go. Well, then it did go. Um, I mean, to me, so this is what I mean, because what to me is so interesting and moving about the book is, you, so you're just now saying, well, you know, a cake is in a book. But that to me sums up why this book so successfully makes literature out of literature, right? Which is that Virginia Woolf herself, so this is what I mean when I say it's the difference between, there's a whole section about Virginia Woolf and she's writing she's deciding to write Mrs. Dalloway, and you've obviously done a tremendous amount of homework, and <laughs> there are sentences in there which are sentences from her journals and you know, all of that. But the spirit of the book, what makes it, I think, more profound and interesting is the spirit of the book is Wolfian. Because Virginia Woolf actually wrote, women's lives are always being judged by the criteria of men. If it's about a battle, if it's about a war, I mean, this is something she wrote, I'm just, paraphrasing, yeah. right? But yeah. she said, but if, you know, if it's a prime minister or if it's, uh, a, a, you know, as I say, a battle or something, then it's important. But if it's choosing scarves or looking at perfumes or, or cooking dinner, it's automatically not important. I mean, there's, I had dug up some quote of her saying something just like this when I was working on this piece. So the, to, the cake is equal to the book for her. She's the one who said it. She's the one who said, we need a literature about women that, I mean, she's writing in 1925, but you know, that takes the stuff of women's lives, or as she thought of it then, and makes it important. That doesn't say a cake is not as important, because for her, it was as important. And they're baking the cake is, is equal to Virginia writing her book. And that's what the book dignifies her life, and sure. it's, that's what I think is so exciting about it, that the book is not just about Virginia Woolf and about Mrs. Dalloway and reincarnating the character in a modern per It does something that is Wolfian. That to me was what was, what was so moving about it. 